We have found out quite a lot of things about the past of our planet, but can we figure out its future? And I mean, not guess or predict, but estimate scientifically. Before we move on to assessing the future of our planet, I suggest we define the future of our channel. Please support our work by subscribing and liking. Thank you. Well, experts think we might learn more about the future of Earth with the help of a few long-term factors. Among them, we've got the rate at which the interior of our planet is cooling, the chemistry at Earth's surface, and even the way our planet gravitationally interacts with other objects in the solar system. And don't forget that we humans also cause serious changes to our home planet. For example, take climate engineering and other technologies. Some people even believe that technology might be what will lead humanity to extinction. If it ever happens, the planet will begin to evolve naturally and much more slowly. Experts think that over periods of hundreds of millions of years, certain space invaders can lead to mass extinctions on Earth. I mean, comets and asteroids that might crash into our beautiful blue world at one point in the future. Another threat from space can be a powerful near-Earth supernova. It is a gigantic explosion, the largest in space, and it unleashes enormous amounts of energy. The temperature at the core of a supernova is often 6,000 times higher than that in the sun's core. It can reach several billion degrees F within microseconds. After that, atoms get crammed together so infinitely close that the squeezed core recoils and the star explodes, creating a superheated shock wave. If a supernova ever occurred around 30 light years away from Earth, we'd have huge problems. An incredibly powerful blast of radiation would bring a massive influx of high-energy neutrinos. Our planet would be vaporized in just a fraction of a second. Even the shock wave would have enough force to wipe out our oceans and the entire atmosphere of our planet. Another prediction says that while the sun is orbiting the Milky Way, stray stars may approach our solar system. They can get close enough to have a disastrous influence on our planet. Such an encounter can also lead to comets in the Oort clouds becoming more active. The Oort cloud is a region of space filled with icy celestial bodies orbiting within half a light year away from the sun. And if something, for example, a wandering star destabilizes this region, the number of comets reaching the inner solar system and U.S. will likely increase 40-fold. But while scientists can't be sure about asteroid impacts or supernova explosions, they can forecast large-scale geological events. One theory claims that Earth will continue to experience glacial periods for quite some time. Also, the movement of tectonic plates will probably result in the appearance of a new supercontinent. It might happen in 250, 300 million years from now, the changes in the luminosity of the sun, which will become brighter and brighter, will lead to an increased level of solar radiation reaching Earth. It will eventually cause a drop in the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere around 600 million years from now. If this tendency continues, plant life will disappear from the face of the Earth. Of course, it will also influence animal life, since plants are the base of the animal food chain on our planet. In 10 billion years or so, the luminosity of the sun will become 10% higher than it is now. It will turn the atmosphere of the planet into a moist greenhouse. The oceans will start to evaporate. In around two, three billion years, the planet's magnetic field might stop functioning. Four billion years from now, a rise in Earth's surface temperature will lead to conditions resembling present-day Venus. By that point, there won't be any life left on the planet. And finally, the sun will most probably absorb Earth in around 7.5 billion years. It will happen after our star enters its red giant phase and expands way beyond the current orbit of our planet. This is Earth, 335 million years ago. I wasn't around then, but there's just one supercontinent, Pangaea. See? Let's watch it shift around and fast forward. Okay, here we go. It just split into two huge pieces. Australia goes this way, North and South America go that way. 
Africa, Asia, Europe, forming, forming, and there we go. The planet as it is today. Let's keep going. I mean, the continents are always on the move. Over time, some of them will crash into each other. Others will break apart. But that'll take about 100 million years. Better put it on super fast forward. 100 years from now, humans keep spitting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, and the planet's already warmed up a bunch. The world's ocean levels have risen about 4 feet. The Bahamas? They've totally disappeared. 200 years from now, the Earth's population is about 19 billion people. The climate's gotten even warmer. We're packed in like sardines over here. New medical tech makes it possible to live to 180. But why? Fossil fuel reserves of oil and gas? Long gone. Oh, and the continents have drifted over 16 feet. The Voyager 1 space probe's about to enter an asteroid cloud at the edge of the solar system. It's the most distant man-made object in the universe, I guess. A thousand years from now, thanks to better quality food, humans are now 7 feet tall on average. Technology solved the pollution and fuel shortage problem. Humanity's doing just fine. Robots do all the work, we just play around all day. Ocean levels have crept up another 10 feet. Islands like the Seychelles, Maldives, Galapagos, and many others have gone underwater. Denmark, the Netherlands, Eastern England, Thailand, and Vietnam are only partially underwater. There's been a huge human migration these last hundred years. Fast forward about 5,000 more years, and it's the year 8113. Humanity's getting ready to open the crypt of civilization. It's a hermetically sealed room in Georgia, in the States. That Georgia. It was created in 1940, and it's full of about 800 books on microfilm, recordings of famous people's voices. It's also filled with bits of technology from that time, like a toaster, a radio, and a typewriter. Some awesome people created the crypt of civilization in case humans experienced a major catastrophe in the distant future and had to rebuild civilization from scratch. We'd all go back to using typewriters. 15,000 years from now, our planet has changed its tilt, and the Sahara Desert is now a tropical paradise. Years of rain turned the dry desert into a wild jungle. 30,000 years from now, the Voyager 1 space probe has finally left the asteroid cloud at the edge of our solar system. If it doesn't collide with anything, it'll be flying in the dark, wide-open outer space for a very long time. 50,000 years from now, the climate's changing a lot. The temperature on Earth is beginning to drop, and we are approaching the beginning of a new ice age. The radio signal with a special, hello all you aliens out there, message sent into space in 1974 has reached its destination. The message contained the human number system and data about our DNA and our solar system. If there was someone on the other end to receive this signal, we might have a response from them. 100,000 years from now, one of the largest known stars in our galaxy, Canis Majoris, explodes with enormous force. The explosion of this supernova can be seen from Earth, even during the day. And the nights are much brighter because of the new strong glow in the night sky. What's new on Earth? Super volcanoes start erupting all over. These volcanoes spew colossal amounts of lava and ash everywhere. Thick black clouds cover most of the sky. This prevents the sun's rays from reaching the ground, and the temperature on our planet drops even lower. Humans mostly live underground anyway, so it's no big deal. Because the stars are gradually moving in different directions, the usual constellations are starting to change shape. Soon, we'll need to come up with totally new constellation names. 250 years from now. Oh, a new island's on the map. Back in 2021, it was just an underwater volcano somewhere in the Pacific. After thousands of years of spouting out lava, it finally reached the ocean surface and busted out in the cool, fresh air. Not much growing on it yet. Niagara Falls has long since disappeared, and Lake Erie and Lake Ontario have teamed up to form one huge super lake. 300,000 years from now, the triple star system WR104 is about to explode. It's spinning crazy fast, and there's a chance that radiation from the explosion could eventually reach Earth. 
that would do a lot of damage to all life on our planet. Voyager 1 reaches the brightest star in the night sky, Sirius. Not a very funny star at all, it's really Sirius. It's 8.6 light years from Earth. 500,000 years from now, scientists are pretty sure that a huge meteorite could fall to Earth any day now. It might be even the size of 8 football fields. The impact of such a massive meteorite would cause an explosion so powerful that its sound would be heard on every continent. That would be followed by super strong earthquakes and tsunamis higher than the Brightside Empire municipal building tower thingy. Okay, I just made that up, but who knows what we'll be building in the future. One million years from now, the rogue star Gliese 710 comes very close to our solar system. We're surrounded by a huge shield of asteroids called the Oort Cloud, and the rogue star is beginning to affect the asteroids hanging out in there. It grabs them, spins them around, and throws them toward the center of our solar system. Comets start to fall on our planet all the time, big ones, causing more tsunamis and earthquakes. 10 million years from now, the Red Sea is gradually expanding into the East African Rift. Africa is now divided in two by a new oceanic gulf. The human DNA molecule has completely decomposed. But it's no big deal. We've become totally digital, without any pesky aging problems. The really cool thing is that other animals have evolved a lot and changed ridiculously. Thanks to a simple interface, we're actually able to talk to dolphins, chimps, dogs, and cats. Turns out cats aren't grumpy, they're just busy contemplating life. 25 million years from now, the San Andreas Fault has been crazy recently and has caused the Gulf of California to flood the Central Valley. There's a new sea on the west coast of North America. 50 million years from now, Africa just collided with Eurasia. The Mediterranean Sea is totally gone. There's a new tallest mountain in the world. Its name? Mount Everest, of course. Australia is continuing its journey north. It already collided with Southeast Asia a few million years ago. The few human colonies still left on Mars need to do some serious backing. Phobos, one of Mars' moons, is beginning to orbit at a lower and lower altitude. That's not good. It's about 14 miles wide, so that's going to be unpleasant. 60 million years from now, the Canadian Rocky Mountains have completely eroded. It's just one gigantic flat plain. 80 million years from now, all that remains of Hawaii is one island. All the others have long since gone underwater. But just next door, a whole new chain of Hawaiian islands has emerged. Finally, 100 million years from now, we made it! The Atlantic shrinking down to nothing. The Americas are almost rubbing up against Africa. Africa's already merged with Eurasia. We've got ourselves a supercontinent again. Hello, Pangea Proxima. All traces of human life are gone or buried deep underground. The movement of the continents has destroyed tunnels, roads, buildings, bridges. Animals and plants now reign supreme on Earth. So, where are all the humans? Well, remember we made the jump to digital about 90 million years ago? Things are still going strong. There are trillions of human minds living on a huge hard drive on a spaceship orbiting Earth. The super low space temperature is good for keeping the drive nice and cool. We have millions of different societies, languages, and cultures just like we had a hundred million years ago. The only difference? We're all little ones and zeros in a huge digital universe that we created. And yes, there's still football. Somewhere, deep underground in super-secret laboratories, scientists are trying to create a black hole. It looks like the latest experiment was a success. The black hole hovers above the desk for a moment, but then, in a split second, it swallows it whole. Uh-oh. After its meal, the black hole grows until it is out of control. Microscopes and test tubes fly into the dark void. Soon everything in the room has been consumed. Each time it eats, it grows bigger and bigger and attracts even larger objects. On the surface, people go about their day as usual. Some joggers stop their run when they see a giant black sphere growing in the distance. Houses are torn from their foundations, and cars fly through the air towards the black abyss. 
In just a few minutes, the black hole has enveloped our entire planet. Then it grows big enough to consume the Moon and Mars. The black hole is now heavier than anything in our solar system. All of the planets begin to circle it, before becoming food for the monster. Finally, even the Sun is extinguished in the belly of the beast. Well, that was pretty bleak. Eh, don't worry. This isn't how the scenario would play out in real life. Our scientists may actually be capable of creating a black hole, but it's far safer than this. The effort to make a black hole is led by the scientists working in Geneva on something called the Large Hadron Collider. This machine basically makes particles move at high speeds until they collide. When this happens, they release a lot of energy and create a lot of interesting effects. Scientists think that energy released by these collisions might be enough to create a black hole. Some people were so worried by this that they even tried to ban the construction of the Large Hadron Collider. Luckily, if a black hole did appear, it would be so small that it wouldn't be able to do anything. Black holes actually produce a lot of energy and release it, often as heat like a furnace. That means that they will fade away when they run out of fuel. If one appeared in the experiment, it would instantly burn out and disappear in a billionth of a second. Even if a stable microscopic black hole was created, it would grow so slowly that nothing would happen. Assuming that it survived long enough to absorb the tiny particles around it, a black hole of this size would take about half a trillion years to gain a pound of weight. Black holes could actually be really useful. One with the mass of Mount Everest would emit enough energy to completely power humanity. Even better, black holes are so dense that the one this big would only take up a tiny bit of space. We couldn't create anything as enormous as the naturally occurring black holes, though. Some can weigh hundreds of thousands of times as much as our sun. Recently, scientists have observed a real black hole feast. The sight of a black hole tearing an enormous star apart is one of the most mesmerizing sights in the universe. Heavier and more destructive than anything else in existence, the black hole is both amazing and terrifying. And black holes aren't actually black at all. They're so massive that even light can't escape their pool, meaning that they're actually invisible. Scientists can only find them with special instruments. Most natural black holes are born as stars reach the end of their lifespan. You can picture healthy stars as giant furnaces that burn hydrogen and give off unbelievable amounts of energy. Every second, stars like our Sun produce more energy than humanity has ever produced, which pushes outwards and makes it want to expand. This is what eventually finds its way to Earth as the heat that birthed life on our planet. The only thing stopping this expansion is gravity, a force that basically just pulls objects toward something heavy. Most people know gravity is something that keeps us planted to the ground and stops us from flying off into space. The force of gravity of a star is so strong on stars that it makes them want to implode in on themselves. So, when a star is healthy, the force of gravity pushes inwards, and the energy it releases tries to inflate it like a balloon. These forces mostly cancel each other out and stop it from doing much at all. When a star burns through its fuel, though, nothing is pushing outwards to stop it from collapsing in on itself. Some really big stars make so much energy that they gradually expand into something called a red giant. When they run out of fuel, they cool, and gravity pushes the enormous object into a tiny space. Scientists use our sun to measure how big things in space are. Our sun weighs one solar mass. If a light star, like our sun, implodes, not much happens, which is lucky if you've ever worried about being swallowed up into a black hole. If a red giant around 10 solar masses implodes, though, some incredible things can happen. The collapse of one of these is so intense that it explodes into a supernova, releasing a light as bright as the entire galaxy. Stars that are massive enough to produce supernovas sometimes become black holes. Their weight causes gravity to push down and compact them until they collapse into a black hole in less than a second. The inside of a black hole is mysterious and unexplored, for obvious reasons. 
One thing we do know is that they're so massive that they can even distort time. One second near the black disk can be equal to weeks or even months on Earth, depending on its size. In 2019, scientists watched a black hole devour a star the size of our sun. Even though it was 860,000 miles wide, the star was completely trapped in the black hole's gravitational field. For a while, they danced around each other, gradually coming closer and closer. Eventually, though, the star was extinguished in the invisible mouth of the black hole. The black hole sometimes releases beams of energy into space. Sizzling plasma flies out at 6,200 miles per second as the black hole finishes destroying the star. About half of the star's mass is consumed, while the rest is ejected into space. Incredibly, these insatiable titans even consume other black holes when they get big enough. The collision of two black holes was recently witnessed by scientists when one, weighing in at 85 solar masses, met another that was 66 solar masses. When black holes interact, the bigger one always swallows the smaller, adding even more mass to itself. The resulting black hole here reached 142 solar masses big. It's hard to believe, but this is still very small for a black hole. It will continue to consume everything around it and might even reach the size of a supermassive black hole at some point. These are unbelievably big and destructive. Our entire galaxy, the Milky Way, rotates around the gravitational field of one of these supermassive black holes. This monster weighs around 4 million solar masses or more than a trillion times our planet. And that isn't even the biggest they get. It's also theorized that black holes can be made without a dramatic explosion. Big gas clouds that weigh hundreds of thousands of solar masses could condense under the force of their gravity to make a star. This object would already be so heavy that it would continue to compact until it became a black hole, skipping the supernova stage. Supermassive black holes are so far away and hard to observe the scientist doesn't have a full understanding of them yet. We don't know much about what happens inside a black hole, leading to a lot of speculation. For decades, people have theorized about how we could use black holes. Knowing that black holes distort time means that someone could use it to travel to the future with the right technology. If it was possible to build a ship strong enough to withstand the powerful gravitational fields, it would be simple. All they would need to do is decide how far they want to go and fly around the outside of the black hole. In the few minutes or hours they spent near the time warp, years could have passed back on Earth. They could be thousands of years old without having aged at all physically. Wow, that's officially a mind-blower.